a born teacher, and that, I think this is quite unusual, it's because so many artists are just individuals and they do their own thing. He shares his talent, and that's really uh, his passion. Dr. Grigsby is a magnet um, for others, and I think that that's uh, an incredible gift. We were very proud of him, and words can't express it. Celebrated artist, writer, and educator, Dr. Eugene Grigsby was born in 1918 in Greensboro, North Carolina. At a young age, he discovered his love for art. One morning, as I was delivering the papers about four o'clock, I saw lights in his house. When the door opened, I looked around the room and there were paintings all around. I was surprised and I asked him where he got them. He said he painted them. And I laughed, I laughed right in his face because he could see that I didn't believe him because my impression of an artist was somebody who was white, but this guy was quite black, kind of dumpy, he was a stonemason. After watching him for a while, he asked me if you want to try, do you, don't you want to try? He put a brush in my hand and it's, that did it. I was painting ever since. It wasn't something that I, that I set out to do, but it just happenstance that I ran into the people that I did that got me involved. During his studies at Morehouse College, he met an art educator who ultimately became his longtime friend and mentor. I got involved with Hale Woodruff, and that's when it became serious. It was through Woodruff that Grigsby realized he could have a profession in art. My mother was accepted of it immediately. My father was questionable. You can't make a living doing that. It's, uh, and it was a long time before he came around. The Americans, led by General George S. Patton, quickly learned how to outmaneuver the German forces. The draft board informed me that I had been given three deferments, and I would not be given any more. Grigsby was a World War II volunteer who followed General Patton through Europe, issuing ammunition to the troops. I devised a means, instead of putting it on the ground, of leaving it in the truck. So when the army came, or the infantry, whatever, came to get ammunition, we could move it from the quartermaster truck to the infantry truck and would not take the time of putting it on the ground and finding it. But we had some very fine people in there. During his service, he married his love, Rosalind Thomasina Marshall, in 1943. Two years later, he returned home to his family. I didn't want to teach. I was going to be an artist. Grigsby may not have seen himself as a teacher early on, but others did. Armed with a master's degree in art and creative talents, Grigsby was specifically recruited to teach at the All Black Carver High School in Phoenix. He sent me a contract, which would pay $2,800 a year, which was twice the amount that the Southern universities had offered, and I didn't have any other job offers, so I came to Phoenix. I had no idea how to find a place, and then one day, 
the man who had who we lived next to, uh, who worked on the garbage truck, came in and told us he had found the house. It had been left to a dog, and a blind man was in charge of it locally. And the lawyer said, if you decide to buy it, don't go in looking around because the neighbors might see you. And if they see you thinking you're going to buy it, they, might, they, they would buy it out from you. The Grigsby's arrived in Phoenix in 1946, and 10 years later, they became the first black family to move north of Van Buren in central Phoenix. He's had a huge number of challenges in his life, and uh, one would hardly know it. He had seen a lot of trouble in his life, and yet he managed to stay on top of it and always look at what is there that I can do now, and didn't ever let, him, let it stop him, didn't ever let it slow him down and he's still doing that to this day. 